we minimong and welcome back to my channel where we talk about all things transformers and transformers action figure related and today on my channel we're gonna be carrying on looking at transformers war world this is issue 29 so if you want to catch any of the other issues that we've got i've got uh issue 28 27 26 everything since the beginning of war world on this channel right now i'll link it somewhere here so that you can go and check those out but this is the continuing story of idw's new version of the story of the transformers now this story is currently being told in two kind of parts really, uh, one part being the War World Saga which is the continuation on from the rise of the Decepticons uh, storyline and this one actually then splits into two so you've got War World that focuses in on what's going on uh, with all the issues in the world of the Transformers and what it's doing to Cybertron and then you also have the escape comics uh, that follow these kind of flesh creatures that also live in, in Cybertron and what's happening to them. I'm also covering these on the channel so if you're interested in this again link in the description. So we can start off by looking at the awesome artwork here where we have Transformers War World Fanatic Killer lost coward it's quite interesting to see all of the the kind of figures and faces that they use on the cover art here because not all of these are actually used in all of it but it's very interesting uh, and they ask the question who will save us uh, on the back we get the awesome cybertron artwork i just i love this kind of line drawing of cybertron very very cool uh, when we open up this bad boy we do get a bit of a a re-up and a bit of a reminder of what's gone on previously there was this face-off between some of the tapes so we had catgut and um also spark stalker and people like that were facing off uh, in the bowels of a, a decepticon i think it was iacon they were in the bottom of here then we also had megatron who was having a little bit of a a face-to-face -face with a cybertronian reporter and then we also got the showdown between six shot and cyclonus as well so all things to, to kind of see and kind of remember before we dip into this storyline. This storyline most prominently features Optimus Prime, Megatron, Ironhide, Javelin, Ape Face, nice to see Ape Face in this, Perceptor, and Mindwipe. So we open up here with the cons and Megatron, and especially Mindwipe here, trying to work out what to do with these titans and trying to bring these titans that are currently orbiting cybertron back online and basically megatron is like we need to do something with these titans we need to get these titans on our side or we just need to bring these titans down before their enemies work out what they could do potentially with these titans because megatron knows if somebody else controls the titans then there's really nothing that they can do against them because the titans are so powerful Back at an Autobot HQ, Ironhide is having a bit of a one-to-one -one with Javelin because Javelin is feeling that uh, she let the side down and people got hurt and injured and even died because of the lack of action that came from Javelin. Ironhide is basically trying to say to his team, don't think about the, fa the past. Don't think about where we've been. We now need to only think about the future and what we need to do now is we need to protect Prime. The, we didn't realize that the cons had basically switched their game up and they were playing for keeps and killing people. They know where the cons are coming from now and they won't make that same mistake again. And we see a really nice lineup here of Autobots. Very, very cool. I love the art style that they've gone for in this all the bots look brilliant especially ironhide look how cool ironhide looks there with his massive chin we then cut to prime and ironhide having a one-to-one -one. and prime is telling him look nobody else dies for me ironhide and ironhide is like all due respect but i'm not sure the universe is leaving that choice entirely up to you 
again referencing the fact that the cons are playing a completely different game and Ironhide seems to understand this but Prime maybe he's still in a little bit of a delusional state that he thinks he can handle this without as many bodies being piled up around the universe as Ironhide probably already needs and thinks it needs to be. They're heading over to the forge. Now the forge is where they're going to find Perceptor. Um, and they were trying to find out about Titan Sparks when they go here. So, first of all, there's a funny little conversation here uh, between um, Prime and Perceptor because Perceptor calls him Orion Park. Orion Parks? Orion Pax, which uh, kind of gets Ironhide's back up a little bit. And Ironhide says, no. Uh, Perceptor then says, hey. You know, he just has some glowing thing in his chest that suddenly gives him a boss token for some to be some kind of factional leader. And Prime says that he agrees that just because he has the Matrix, that doesn't lead him to be a leader. He still needs to prove that. Uh, so Ironhide gets a little bit more pissed at Perceptor than Perceptor saying <laughs> than Prime does about what Perceptor's saying. Um, Perceptor then asks, gets asked questions about the Titans and more to the point about titan sparks and what he's saying is that actually titans are pretty much expensive uh, pretty expensive to put together pretty expensive to keep online because they're so big and so massive so what he's saying is that basically um prime one of the other primes before him so this is the uh, dominus prime actually said Okay, so when Titan Sparks come out of the Well of Sparks, store them. Do not put them into Titans. Do not create these beings. So we find out there's actually 16 Titans, Sparks, that have been diverted to storage beneath the pyramid. So essentially, there are 16 Titans waiting to be born. At this time, the cons are preparing to actually attack the forge and there's a really funny conversation between blitzwing and apeface where they're talking about blitzwing and said who blitzwing i've got three modes too you know and <laughs> blitzwing says but they're not very good are they <laughs> and then apeface says hey what's wrong with my modes blitzwing but he, it's it's true you know <laughs> they're not as good as blitzwings are they so that's pretty funny and then the decepticons prepare to attack and of course they attack and everything starts going kaboom kaboom shur, shur, shur. then they land and the the autobots kind of retreat a little bit knowing that they are very much overpowered by these really incredibly powerful triple changer decepticons then we start to see some of the other titans here. So this shows us a picture of a titan here. So this is Chila, uh, a titan who raced a comet. Uh, that's at the top. So these are ones that are circling Cybertron at the moment. Prime is then made aware that the cons are attacking. And he basically, he can't believe that Perceptor has actually been able to keep the, the fact that there's 16 other titans in hibernation underneath their secret for so long and asks him who else knew and he says the intelligent officer perhaps and a few other people so that would lead him to know that starscream knew about these titans at this point we can see that there's some attacking going on and there's a big hole and then one of the cons drops in and tries to attack poor old brawn gets attacked again Slashed up but not destroyed, and they also see that Citadel, the largest of the Titans, is sat above Cybertron. So they're just showing all of these different Titans at the top, and they all look pretty cool. All these are Titans that I've never heard of before as well, so it's nice, interesting, new stuff for me. So Mindwipe and the other cons then realize there is nothing they can do to fix these titans because they released a data bomb these are in episodes before i started looking at this uh, which basically damaged them beyond repair so what they're going to do instead they're going to bring the titans down and crash the titans into cybertron instead the battle continues within the forge and it rages to the point 
where they actually start to uh, sound an alarm because the whole place is going to come crashing down. So this Titan here as well is Cargo Hold and she remembers the first forged or claimed to be. Uh, has fought no battle, fires no shots for countless mega cycles. She lived and only thought of only peace. So this is a, a Titan that's never been in a battle ever before we then see an awesome panel of prime attacking one of the seekers that is such a cool prime in action panel and then crunches with his foot down on top of them as well and tells them to listen you have to clear out your comrades to save them so prime is still trying to save them Ironhide then reminds Prime that actually that's one of the Seekers who killed Sentinel Prime. And Prime says that he knows. Blitzwing finally breaks in and he's super happy but gets shot in the back by who else but Apeface. <laughs> of course it's, it's Apeface and Apeface <laughs> says that he's sorry. He thought he was a target. Uh, I guess the sheer glory of your alt modes threw my aim off. <laughs> <laughs> so this might be an, an ongoing continuing battle uh, between these two which could be quite funny uh, we then see acid storm you know, basically melting everything with acid uh, everybody then tries to escape this this panel here reminds me more of mask than transformers for some reason definitely brings mask to the forefront in my mind and prime tries to start to get everybody out at the same time so we see cons and bots leaving at the same time as the forge melts down and goes into the pits of Cybertron, basically. Then on the other side, we see that Chila, Citadel, and Cargo Hold all crash into Cybertron. One lands in Kallis, one in the Sea of Rust, and the other one and one in the Memorial Crater. The very last page of the comic shows that later, at the site of Cargo Holds Fall, there are two cons making their way into the bottom of the pit or the bottom of the crater, and they find Provoke. So they find Provoke in the bottom of Cargo Holds Crater, very, very interesting times. Very interesting. We see the other covers as well. So we see Prime here. A nice, very red cover for that one. The one that I got. This one's also pretty nice. Uh, looks kind of more G1 inspired rather than uh, the kind of tropes that they're going for at the moment. And then we also have this awesome looking Prime, which I really uh, the other information that we get and the other adverts are for a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles director's cut in the last running. And we also get a little advert for these little Transformers plushies, which are pretty cool. Next up, though, War World Titans. And then again, awesome artwork on the back. So that's it for this issue. Really interesting times ahead for the Transformers. I'm loving War World, especially now with the Titans coming in. And it's an opportunity for me to learn about Titans that I actually don't know about. I've never heard of these Titans before. So really, really cool. Love the way that it's going. Escape is a perfect companion for this as well, showing the other side of it, because we started to see the Titans falling in Escape now as well. So I'm not sure if I'm getting these in the right order, if I'm supposed to have done this one, then done the issue of Escape that I did last time. So apologies if you are trying to follow along both. Uh, I can only do these in the order that I get sent these uh, from my supplier. Let me know your thoughts on this and everything else down in the comments. And as always, I'll see you in my next video. All right, guys, in a bit. Peace.